All right, we got why Gears of War. Why was Gears of War so awesome? By Ackman. Ooh, baby. Gears of War is the most comically masculine. Whoa. Damn, Ackman. You looking like you hopping on the Sazul. The Sazul. Dang. Testosterone field adventure since the movie Predator. <laughs> but while Predator used a cast of super buff, talented actors to portray the massive size and deadly nature of the Predator, Gears of War uses a cast of super buff actors to... To do the same thing. <laughs> ah, screw it. You guys want to go kill locusts or what? Yeah. Gears of War is an extremely <laughs> difficult game to review because it almost feels counterintuitive to analyze on a deeper level. It's like trying to explain why food tastes good or why water quenches thirst. Just an average day in uh, in Act Man or Act Man. <laughs> I don't know why it just does. <laughs> you gotta leave the fucking muscle suit on the whole video. <laughs> I could sum up why Gears. Of He's War gonna leave the suit on the whole video. Was <laughs> so awesome in five words. Chainsaw on gun. Yeah. On activation. Yeah. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was worth the wait. I'll see you in five years for the Gears of War 2 review. Peace. Great Gears video. Gears of War is one of the most important shooters of the last two decades. Its influence is so widespread, you probably don't even realize when you're playing something that's been influenced by yeah. it. Yeah. Epic Games Kickstarter. Bro, the cover system was. I don't know. I don't remember if it was. Uh, what do you call it? I don't remember if Gears of War was the first game to do the cover system. I think there are a couple other ones to do the cover system. Um, because back in the day, I distinctly remember a game. I think it was called Kill Switch or something like that. I think it was Kill Switch that also had a, a, a cover system. But I think that game was on PlayStation, if I remember. And that was a, a, a crazy fun game. I mean, I, I don't know. I'd have to go back and figure it out or whatever. But yeah, uh, the, the first game that like really popularized the whole cover system to like to such a crazy degree was Gears of War. Started a massive franchise with this instant hit back in 2006, spawning two critically acclaimed sequels. Yeah. Prequel. Yeah. Comic books. An upcoming Netflix movie. Today, oh, really? The War Legacy is well known, but let's ignore all of that. Let's shift gears and rewind the clock to 2005. Mm -hmm. I want to take you back to when Halo. Oh, Jesus. This game came out in 05? God dang. Oh, I feel old. That's, what was that, 19 years ago? Halo was Microsoft's right hand man, and Gears of War was its left. What really attributed to its success? Why is it considered such a landmark title? Does the gameplay still hold up today? Or was Gears of War simply overrated? Well, let's hit the bench press, link up with Delta Squad, and rev, rev up, up our Lancers straight into this. Oh yeah! Bro. <laughs> Bro. Gears is so, like, like in a retrospective kind of way, I don't, like while I was playing Gears of War, like you know, like one, two, and three, I didn't know how good I had it until it was just gone. Uh, <laughs> it, there, there, I don't know. I'd have to go back and do like a little retrospect to figure it out if it, if it still stands up. But you know, I, I, that's why I'm watching this video. <laughs> the fucking chainsaws. Oh, the laser. Yep. Bro, this is like, this is, Gears was so good. All it was, was just big, muscly men shooting guns and ripping chainsaws, fighting aliens. That's all it was. <laughs>
But before we jump into it, this video is sponsored by Displate and their amazing metal posters. Are you looking to buff up your room decor? Then you need to order some Displates. They work with over 40,000 licensed artists and have over 1.3 nice. million designs to choose from, ranging from movies, video games, anime. If you're a fan of something, chances are Displate offers a poster of it. Attaching them to the wall is incredibly easy and doesn't require any tools. Just wipe down the part of the wall, stick on the leaflet, hold for five seconds, do the same with the magnet, and poof! You can now put up any display poster and even swap them out. They come in three different sizes, and if you really want to get fancy, you can even add some outer trim. Display nice. currently ships to 56 countries and delivers in four to five business days. And by ordering these posters, you are directly supporting the channel. And if you use code ACTMAN at checkout, I'll get you 22% off one to two displays and 33% off three or more. Hell so yeah. For order your awesome display posters today and display yourself. Thank you, Display, for sponsoring this video. And now for something completely different. I remember that. Act one, new flagship. With Gears of War, we are delivering the most powerful high definition gaming experience today. Oh my god, I remember this. Who made Gears of War? Was the the main dude that well not the main dude, but like the the the, the head guy was like his name was Cliff Blazinski. And for some reason, anytime I read a game informer, his name would just get dropped multiple times. And when I was a little kid, I didn't like understand why or whatever. It's like, ooh. He's like the badass rebel developer who's doing things a little bit differently. Cliff Blazinski. And as like a little kid, I never really understood why. Um, but I don't know. Maybe I'll we'll cover a little bit. Yeah, because we're delivering the yeah and I think, isn't this him? <laughs> Damn, the shirt screams Linkin Park. <laughs> I probably had this shirt, to be honest. I had a, a similar shirt to like that. Next generation of gaming right here and right now. 14 years building up to this moment yeah. since I started doing this. Back in 2005, Microsoft was under a lot of pressure. They got the jump in the 7th gen console war by releasing the 360 a year before their competitors. Oh, yeah. And one third of their launch lineup consisted of... Like, look at this. Like... Okay, let me see. I think Amped, Banger. COD 2, Banger. Condemned. I don't remember it playing this. FIFA sports game gun banger cameo I don't remember I never played it actually unironically this is a good game uh it just it's just a good game <laughs> it's not like golem levels of stupidity it's just a good game uh sports game sports game it's whatever need for speed banger racing game perfect dark zero actually a good game uh what else PGR never played it quake 4 eh. uh you know golf game and tony hawks american wasteland the, and this is coming off of like what was this like tony hawks pro skater like one two and three and then maybe maybe it went from three into american wasteland i think was this one of the first games that you could like just get off your skateboard and just like walk around and shit <laughs> sports games so yeah this is like a pretty stacked lineup Unlike the Xbox, the 360 didn't launch with its killer app yet. And while Oblivion was on the horizon, Microsoft yep. needed a solid multiplayer game to sell the 360 and continue pushing Xbox Live. Sony and Nintendo were hot on their trail with the PS3 and Wii, both set to hit oh, shelves yeah. in November 2006. And if the 360 didn't have an answer, the tides would turn quickly. Microsoft has one punch to throw before the juggernaut of the PlayStation 3 launches, and Gears is that punch. Determined not nice. to squander their position, Microsoft decided, I right, fuck it. My only option is to gamble it all, betting all their chips on Epic's upcoming Gears of War. And Microsoft has never slung their weight this much behind a new IP that they do not own. And they're Dang. taking this very, very seriously. With the future of the Xbox 360 at stake, all this... Yeah, companies just literally don't do that anymore to place so much trust in like a like a third-party developer that, you know, they're making a game and releasing it as an exclusive to a, you know, for a console, a console exclusive. I don't, I, like, especially on like the, you know, the console release of it or whatever, you know? Like, yes, there will be, like, exclusives to consoles still nowadays, but th this is after the fact that the, a console has 
uh, what do you call it, already been released. So, but to release a new console with like a brand new IP on top of it, like on the same day is like, it's like unheard of. I mean, but me as a little kid, I didn't really understand all, all like of the, the, the little weavings of, uh, what do you call it? You know, trust in like between company, another company, game developer, game publisher, and all that shit. It just didn't matter to me. All I, all I saw was as a little kid was just, oh, it, it's a game on a console. I will play this game. Pressure and stress then fell on the shoulders of Epic Games and its lead designer, Cliff Blazinski. Yeah. I lose sleep over this game every night thinking about how it controls, thinking about the pacing of it, thinking about how strong the enemy is. <laughs> He's got the... Oh, there you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. The, uh, uh, the leather band with studs, the studded leather band. This is the company's baby, it's my baby, and we're betting the farm on it. Launching a new IP is always risky business. It, yeah, I don't even remember this game. What is Lawbreakers? Gravity Defying Combat. What is this? Is this like a supposed to be like a Warframe killer or some shit like that? <laughs> but to bank on it becoming a system seller, a killer app, that is quite the gamble. Microsoft is really staked on this game. This is their killer app for the holiday for Xbox 360. So Gears of War, the new killer app for Xbox 360, right? Absolutely. And when it Why are they calling these games apps? Came to the reveal of Gears of War at E3 2006, Epic needed to make a statement. After and you know what's crazy? Like, this is like, Cliff is like the main guy and he's going up there himself doing the demos and all the shit. Look, bro, good on Cliff for doing this shit like firsthand. It's like, you, if you want something done, do it your fucking self. Or no, 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 that's nothing. If you want something done right, you have to do it yourself or whatever. And this is him. He's playing the game. He's a developer for the game. He's met, like seeing the game every day. He's in it. He's demoing the game in front of like thousands of people in front of an audience. What dev does that? No, literally nobody. After the demo, Cliff got off stage and went outside for some fresh air, only to be greeted by a familiar face. Oh shit. Hey, good job. How are you, man? When you, when you do those live demos, I guess you really gotta stay with the aliens the, or you'll the, look the, bad. The, did you hear the sound and everything? Oh yeah, yeah. It's fantastic. just like, boom, it's like- Bro, look at this. <laughs> it just goes with the aura that is Cliff Blazinski at this time. It's like, yes, it's a suit, but it's like kind of, scraggly and whatnot he's like he's still in like rebel mode or whatever the bass and then it's crunchy and like i labored over that uh assault rifle sound with the sound designer We're like it's gotta be pop it's gotta pop right? so. i love that chainsaw congratulations you i love that chainsaw oh okay you impressed bill gates mission fucking accomplished yeah it's funny because a few days before e3 microsoft executive peter moore felt the Chainsaw Lancer was too gratuitous and gory, no. and he suggested that Epic remove it from the demo. Oh, well, fuck you, bitch. The Chainsaw Lancer is like, when you think of Gears of War, you that's the gun you think of. Chainsaw on top of Assault Rifle. That is Gears of War. And for him to want that to be removed is like insane to me. And Bill Gates was even like, yeah, I like that. <laughs> oh, my God. I guess Peter Moore's contention about the song is that it's a, it's a little, you know, over the top gory. That's exactly what the kind of branding we were going for, I thought. That's exactly the kind of brand we're going for. It's what makes Gears Gears, and we need to have that moment at ease. Oh, look, it's the, the D4 dude. <laughs> Dang. And to this day, that's true. I think Bill Gates' reaction represents how everyone felt the first time they saw the Lancer in action. Yeah, exactly. It's become one of the most iconic weapons in video game history. Yeah. And fans probably shuddered to think what Gears of War would be without it. But Epic stuck to their guns, literally. And I think that type of confidence in their vision is why Gears of War has such a crystal clear identity. Even though Microsoft questioned certain elements, they ultimately trusted in the team and their vision of a dark, gritty third-person shooter. They were even persuaded by Epic to increase the RAM of the 360 so that Gears of War Dang. and future titles could be rendered and played at 720p. The reason I Dang, that's fantastic. Good for them for pushing so hard on that. I bring all this up is that 
Maybe this sort of relationship between Microsoft and their studios is what's been missing recently and why yeah. so many of Xbox's core franchises have fallen on hard times. Gear oh, dang. The relationships. Here's the words, the perfect crash course on how to market a game. It changed how games are marketed. Now, I wish I could play the Mad World trailer, but copyright is... Oh, shit. Yeah. The Mad World trailer. Bro. This shit, like me and my buddies learned how to play this song. We we all loved playing Gears of War so much. I remember going to my buddy like Julian Jordan's house and we would do like, I don't remember. Did this, uh, I think this game had LAN, like local area network, um, where you could like just plug in like an ethernet cord into like uh, a splitter and you, you get like a bunch of TVs together and you just like do it old school like Halo or whatever. And yeah, we were just like, I learned how to play that shit on harmonica. My buddy Julian played that shit on uh, piano. And I think his mom was singing it, just singing it. And, and my buddy Kyle was playing that shit on bass guitar. Yeah, we love this shit, dude. Is a bitch. And so is your mom. For a game about macho space marines blasting subterranean bug men, you'd expect the trailer to showcase a bloodbath of gore and violence. Instead, you get hopelessness, desperation. Yeah. You can see it all on Marcus's face. I mean, this really struck a chord with people. We'd never seen a game advertised in such a dramatic, serious way. It felt like a movie trailer. And it was all done with in-game assets. Epic weren't just selling Gears of War they were selling Unreal Engine 3, and the viral success of the Mad World trailer inspired other studios to mimic its tone, atmosphere, and use popular music in their trailers too. <laughs> it showcased the power of the Xbox 360, and for consumers, we were sold. What separated Gears of War from every other shooter were its dark, gritty undertones and the weight behind it all. All of these pieces set Gears of War up to be the next flagship of Xbox until Master Chief's glorious return. After E3, yeah. Gears quickly became one of the most anticipated games in recent memory. But would it live up to the hype? Yes! Act 2, simply absurd. But that's enough history lessons. How did everything turn out? On the surface, Gears of War might seem like a big dumb action game for big dumb people. And that's because it is. It is. <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> but it was made by really, really, really smart people. This isn't an insult, by the way. Dumb fun is sometimes the best kind of fun. Yeah. I like being able to turn my brain off and just enjoy something. Enjoy explosions and go. There were so many good things about Gears of War. Like the campaign. Like me and my buddies play anytime we got like a shooting game. Uh, we we always had to play the campaign on the hardest difficulty first, and then after that, you then you can get to go play multiplayer. Um, and the the thing with like the all the gears games was, if I remember correctly, I think you could do at least co op with them, like you know couch co op or, or split screen co op or whatever. And that, I don't know, they just added to it with uh with how much you could just accomplish with with just the campaign alone gunfights you know not every video game has to be a fucking philosophy lecture on the complex moral dilemmas of altruism versus self-interest yeah and how these things coincide with the concept of free will and choice bioshock yeah goddamn nerd a man <laughs> chooses a slave obeys that in your house bitch you hear that shit but seriously, you ever feel like <laughs> developers nowadays tend to overcomplicate things? Yes. Like they make getting to the fun part of a game an obstacle instead of something immediate. Uh, 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 oh, baby. Oh. The real challenge begins after you beat the game. Well, you've got to put 15 hours into this RPG, uh. then it starts to get good. Here's oh, yeah. It back to a time when AAA... Yeah, Ackman fucking cooking right now. Games were made... With the simple mindset of, hey, let's make a fun video game. Years ago, I just wanted to see a, a gun with a chainsaw on it to me, right? Like a, yeah. like a futuristic version of a bayonet. Chainsaw with a gun? Now that sounds like a chocolate and a peanut butter type situation. A time <laughs> where the phrase... Uh, <laughs> oh, man. I, I'm trying to remember when... Okay, so this game came out in what, like 2005? 
this game was Doom Eternal before Doom Eternal was Doom Eternal. This was the Doom of like my childhood. This was the big muscly gun shooting guy before Doom guy, at least for me, because I didn't play like the the PC Doom or whatever. This. Pick up and play was more prevalent. Gears of War is about fluid in and out of cover, being able to take cover anywhere. The weapons are easy to use. It's very sort of intuitive, and we're finding that with press people and new people coming onto the project that they're able to pick it up and play pretty quickly. And so people are having fun because it's so easy to play. I find it's just its simplicity is what makes it different for me. You play Gears of War for 10 minutes, and you know right then and there if you're going to keep playing or not. You yeah. know exactly what it is. What does that mean, Got double answer? Oh, fuck, you son. Son of a cock! Gears of War obviously has that classic Gibra vibe that yeah. appealed to a lot of guys and characterized the Xbox 360 era. Huh? Where the fuck you live? Come on, tell me, bitch. I live in North Carolina, so I hope you live close so I can fuck your sister. <laughs> <laughs> this was the tamest of conversations in Gears of War. The people that played Gears of, like, you know, with the concentric circles, if you played Gears of War, you probably played Call of Duty. So, like, the same people that were playing Call of Duty, whenever they got bored of that, they would come over and play Gears. Oh, 100%, dude. <laughs> how about I, how about I <laughs> but there's more than meets the eye. <laughs> oh, my God. And the whole, like, lobby for that, like, the after screen, for the after action report or whatever. Oh, my God. That's just, I, thank God that game didn't have, a like, a report system because if that was the case, literally like that those four people would be re reporting those four people and these four people would have been reporting the other four people it would have just been reports on top of reports you might think the absurd proportions is just a stylistic choice to make the characters and art style unique on second thought maybe their bodies aren't so absurd but oh yeah <laughs> because proportions is just a stylistic choice to make the characters and art style unique on second thought yeah, this is like uh like the voice actor of I forgot his name in the game. And it's like, oh, this is what he looks like in real life. He is a jacked dude. Let's make his character also a jacked dude. But maybe their bodies aren't so absurd, but there's more to it than simply trying to make the player feel like Hal in that one episode of Malcolm in the Middle. If yeah. these dude bros <laughs> are comically oversized, what does that say about the locusts who are just as beefy and jacked? Yeah. It says the locusts aren't a joke. Their basic enemy type can match the toughness and physicality of our heroes. Yeah. It illustrates. Yeah. You think these guys are like cannon fodder? These guys, if you they get close enough, they will destroy you because they also have like a. Uh, what did they do? I think they just came up and like meleeed you. And like when you get meleeed in that game, that's like half your health or whatever. So, uh, yeah. Straits what an overpowering threat the locusts are. It's the same thing as Predator. I think the best word to describe Gears of War is weight. Right. When you take cover, Marcus slams his body against the wall. You feel the weight of all that meat and muscle crashing into a solid object. Every yeah. footstep carries a loud thud as you can feel the weight of all their armor and equipment. Unironically, I think this game has like some of the best footsteps in any FPS game. Like just actually going back and looking at like all the footage and whatnot. <laughs> With such uh, an amount of detail that they put in for like the sound design. It's like, I don't think anybody ever played the, the Gears multiplayer and was ever like, Where's the footsteps? Where's the audio? Uh, that phrase was never uttered in this game, I bet. Equipment. Even the soundtrack is as bombastic and loud as possible. Oh, yeah. Sure, the soundtrack is loud, but it knows when to be quiet, when to establish mood and atmosphere. And the haunting melody of the main theme has become so iconic. When you chainsaw a locust, their body twitches uncontrollably. Blood splatters everywhere, even on screen, as their torso is torn in half. When you curb stomp an enemy, your character chambers that kick like a bullet before unleashing it. All this yeah. violence and gore is just... Well, it's awesome. What do you want me to say? Yeah. It really added a lot of brutality and grit to Gears of War. Gore!
Also the horrific death sounds. Oh yeah, the death sounds. Wait also works in describing the enemies you fight. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. With enemies like the Boomer, the same weapons that might stun drones and wretches or send them flying don't have the same impact. One sniper shot to the dome will decapitate drones, but the boomer will keep strutting on them hoes. Oh yeah, the boomers were like uh, the hunters of Gears of War. You need like some sort of like big, meaty, slow moving, chunky tank unit that like is like an impending doom type of deal. And that was the boomer. And God damn it, if this mother, like, cause they all had fucking rockets. Like if I don't know how many times I died to a boomer playing these goddamn games, dude, it was annoying. The core gameplay for Gears of War is mechanically solid. Yeah. It works. Kind of like a... Don't space. say it. Don't fucking say it. Gear. <laughs> Beneath the absurd simplicity, there are some pretty genius ideas. Take the active reload mechanic. In every other shooter besides Doom, reloading is a moment of downtime and vulnerability. But in Gears, it can empower the player. <laughs> Let's do this. Mastering yep. the timing on this mini game. Yep, like right up here. You had like your little reload bar. And if you got like a perfect reload, it, it shaved some time off. But if you got like a normal reload, like nothing, nothing would happen. But if you miss this and like, let's say you miss like right there, your gun would jam. You would just be like, oh, shit, I lost my position. I got to dip out. <laughs> For each weapon then becomes an expression Oh yeah, perfect. The, the, right there. Like I remember in the beginning I sucked ass at reloading. But then the more you play, <laughs> you just get better at doing the perfect reloads. Of skill. If you screw up the timing, your reload will take much longer. But if you hit it just right, you'll reload much faster. And the perfect Yeah, it's it's so good and it's just like the simplest form of skill expression. Just wait and then click the thing when it's on the white box. It it's so easy reload will cause those rounds to deal more damage this mechanic not only is exclusive to gears of war and sets it apart from every other shooter but it actually makes reloading fun everything in this game is big size does matter the buildings are massive some locusts like the corpser and brumac are towering behemoths and it all adds a sense of scale to this conflict this is the war to end all wars And you know what the, the the funny thing about the reload thing is? It's like, oh, even if you think at it from like a multiplayer meta perspective level, it's like, okay, because like a lot of the maps were like kind of shaped like uh like this. Or or to some degree, something like uh it would be like this thing. It'd be like something like this and this team started over here this team started over here and it's like essentially just like like a half and half type of deal and with the whole like roadie run thing and the reload thing is like let's say what do you value in like multiplayer do you value that like getting that extra damage then if you like if you liked getting the extra damage so to have the, the extra damage on your first uh like encounter then okay like let's say you have like one like one two three four like your dude start over here like these guys valued the damage but these guys valued the uh positioning more so so let's say these guys are just gonna like do the what was it it was like a little dodge roll like you dodge roll out and then you start roadie ruddy running to like wherever like your your favorite position was if but if you valued the damage more let let's say you take time and you shoot your gun a little bit and you get that perfect reload if the, the this other team realized what you were doing they could advance on you so they have the better position you know there'd be like a bunch of cover and shit everywhere so you give up positioning but you do more damage so it's all about like what you valued uh playing the game 
Emphasizing cover as a mechanic was a unique idea at the time because it forced players to approach firefights more strategically. You get your ass kicked in gears if you just run out into the open without a plan. Players had to think more tactically about positioning and movement. And as someone who has barely played Gears of War multiplayer, it's a lot of fun, man. Even to this day. Oh, oh baby, got him again. <laughs> Experienced gamers can master techniques like wall bouncing, and it's interesting to watch the movement tech. A decent yeah, the like the wall bouncing. I never got good at it when I was a little kid because I didn't know what the fuck it was. I just understood uh, you cling onto a wall, you move your camera, and then you dodge to somewhere else on the wall, and you just like essentially just spam A. A decent player could get the kill on a great player simply by having better positioning. No. What the fuck? Where were you? Yeah. Where did you come from? Yeah, the chainsaw was like the noob friendly thing. Like if you did, if you were bad at shooting, all you did was just rev up your chainsaw. And if you have someone moving in on you, you just had to be in the range to where it just auto locks on. And it's like, I got gotcha, you, bitch. And, and yeah, like if you were getting chainsaw kills, it was kind of obvious that you were like the new guy on the team or in the game. It wasn't just about outgunning your opponents, but outsmarting them, outmaneuvering them. <laughs> the controls are intuitive and quick to learn, which made it real easy for newcomers to acclimate. The cover mechanics also added quite a bit of immersion because that's what you do in a war. You fucking yeah. take cover. Yeah. See? Yeah, see, that's what happens. So in the campaign, these battles made you feel like you were part of a military engagement between two factions. It feels more like a gunfight. The fact that these characters dive into cover like they mean it, like their lives depend on it. The fact that they're not like doing this kind of circle strafing dance around each other and jumping in battlefield. I mean, there's really no jumping in war, right? So you want to keep your... <laughs> Cliff using the realism argument for his game where humans are fighting aliens is so funny. <laughs> it's realistic to use cover when fighting aliens. <laughs> Head down, not up. So I think that coupled with the fact that we've done a really, really good job of handling the third person over the shoulder camera, so we almost have the best of both worlds of third and first person shooters. I think this is a big reason why a lot of gamers who have served in the military. And what does he mean like circle strafing? Like, and he, he dropped, you know, what's funny is like, he dropped a, a game as an example on, he, he said battlefield, <laughs> which is kind of hilarious because games, whenever they try to, uh, what do you call it? Whenever they try to like justify something or whatever, they never really use, um, other games in their public speech of like trying to sell their game. It's kind of like this. It's kind of like that, but, but, but this. Like, that just never happens nowadays. <laughs> Fucking love Gears of War. Part of the reason Gears of War appealed to such a wide audience is it took more hardcore tactical aspects and fitted them into a smaller, more intimate space. The large health pools mean you either need one good shot or concentrated fire to take someone down. This means bullshit or frustrating deaths are almost non-existent. And yeah. it's pretty goddamn rare for a shooter. Uh, we well, yeah. I mean, the sniper was like a one-shot headshot, but I mean, it's whatever. There's no real, real counterplay to that. Uh, and it was even worse for the torque bow. Uh, whenever you got hit by one of those things that like fully, like, uh, what do you call it? At full torque or whatever. It's like, you can't really counterplay that. <laughs> We started branching away from the hardcore tactical angle when we started realizing that to a lot of people what tactical means and boils down to is you're shooting tiny little pixels of dudes who are exposed, you know, 500 meters away. Mm -hmm. uh, we took what we considered the good elements of tactical gameplay, uh, self-preservation and flame. Yeah, because this, if you remember, it, I th this game has smokes in there to like cover up your like where your, your team was like going and whatnot. So <laughs> I didn't really realize this until like just now <laughs> that this like, cause remember like you had the frag grenade and you could like walk up and like hit somebody with a frag and then they're, they're dead. Or you can walk up, tag somebody with a smoke and then they're, they got smoke on their person or whatever. <laughs>
flanking, and we kind of super deformed that and we cram it into a tighter environment where you're playing a tactical game just on a much yeah, look, he was trying to do it. smaller scale. The missions for the campaign act like a series of roller coasters. It might be the same ride every time, but if the ride is exhilarating, you can go on that shit a bunch of times. Yeah. And having multiple forks in the road where players can choose one path or the other does add some slight replayability. At times, it can feel like a shooting gallery, but you know, that's kind of the point. Yeah. And the combat loop never feels too redundant or repetitive. And that's because every few missions, they always throw in some monkey wrench, like a berserker who can crash through walls and destroy cover. My only major comp yeah every couple of missions there was like a gimmick fight or whatever like a like a new thing Plant is the limited selection of weapons everything feels great to use except maybe the hammer burst rifle but there was a lot of untapped potential in this first attempt the chainsaw melee is a risky one hit kill but uh -huh. if you're shot while revving you're stunned and basically become a free kill yet it's a great reward for players that do close the distance it's also a fantastic way to ambush people surprise motherfucker come on yeah you pulled that same fucking trick on me twice now <laughs> i'm retarded in a campaign, <laughs> each encounter offers players multiple routes, and planning your movements based on the enemy's position is something you're always thinking about. It's even more fun to coordinate with a buddy when playing co-op, and the game seems more balanced for two players, which makes a solo run on harder difficulties uh, sometimes feel like bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yep. The different locust types are all meant to assault and disrupt your positioning in a different Oh, I forgot about these little dudes that like climb on the ceilings and shit, dude. Way. Drones lay down suppressive fire. Wretches will charge you. Boomers shoot explosives that can penetrate light cover. The final boss, General Ram, is a huge pain in the ass. Yeah. Fuck this guy. Yet I think it's brilliant that the developers basically made him immune to the rules of the game. Like, yeah. he doesn't take cover. Cover is for pussies, and that's what you are. They <laughs> force you out of cover, so you have to approach this fight unlike any other. It's genius. Gears of War managed to carve out its own niche on the Xbox 360 and stand not in front of Halo, but next to it as another reason to buy the console. That is such a good, like, little, like, insight. It's not trying to take away players from a certain genre. It is merely adding to the shoot the, like the the shooting genre you know and it's not an fps it's like a third person what, what was it third person suit a tps yeah but nobody nobody says it like that <laughs> because gears of war was so successful it popularized cover-based mechanics and paved way for many games to adopt this style of combat in one way or another to take a page oh, yeah. of cole's book let's use a football analogy Gears of War is the standard run-up-the-middle play. Sometimes it works, but it seems most times it doesn't. The tactic? Obvious brute force. Except it's Marshawn Lynch breaking nine tackles, running for 67 yards, and scoring the game-winning touchdown. Yeah. That's Gears of War. The simplest play executed to perfection. Fucking sweet, dude. The narrative. Like, I never really watched any of the multiplayer competitive scene for Gears of War. I wish I did. Like I like I want to to have like a like a throwback league or something to be like just somebody put up like a million dollars and just show us like what like the best Gears of War has to offer in terms of like I don't know just gameplay and shit like that. Like make it an experience. I think that'd be a, a baller ass tournament to watch. Gears of War takes place on Sarah, a planet dominated by unrealistic body standards, where every man's bones... Uh, he is really going in on the unrealistic body standards. <laughs> I mean, but this, if there's anything to go against the, the female unrealistic body standard thing, Gears would be the game, 100%. There's dudes with, like, arms bigger than my goddamn legs in here. <laughs> Structure looks something like this. Yes. Here on Sarah, life was good. <laughs> until emergence day but here's the thing i never really thought i never really got sad about playing this game whenever i would see like the, the all the big old jack dudes i just like went like to go work out or something that's my thought process
a date which will live in infamy when the locust hordes erupted from the ground and overran humanity killing billions yes billions with a b 25 percent of humanity is killed in just 24 hours and the locust quickly turned sarah into a war-torn wasteland pushing humanity to the brink of extinction 14 years after emergence day you are dropped into the oversized boots of marcus phoenix a former soldier who gets busted out of jail by his best friend dominic santiago what about the other prisoners you can't just leave them here they're gone hoffman pardoned everybody is that right welcome back to the army soldier thanks man you're such an upstanding guy i can't nice. wait to help you reunite with your long lost wife I like how even though Marcus has been in prison for four years, he's clean shaven, except yeah. for the soul patch. I assume yeah. because he's such a badass, he simply shaved with his own fingernails. Marcus and Dom <laughs> fight their way through to prison and narrowly escape a corpse or trying to clap their cheeks. Well, here's the thing about like weird uh, facial hair. Um, you can pretty much get away with essentially any look uh, when it comes to like facial hair or attire. As long as you are just like ridiculously jacked and your jaw is literally wider than your forehead, you can literally put anything on and it'll pretty much look good. Clean shaven, except for the soul patch. I assume because he's such a badass, he simply shaved with his own fingernails. <laughs> Marcus and Dom fight their way through to prison and narrowly escape a corpse or trying to clap their cheeks. Get it? Because it looks like a hand. Hey, that really <laughs> Together, you and Dom team up with Delta Squad and fight in humanity's last stand against the nightmarish locust threat. Along the way, you recruit science expert Baird and Cole, a former thrash. Oh, player. yeah. So Cole, the, bad guy. the Cole train. And every time he got like a kill, he was like, woo! Guys, go kill him. That's pretty much it for That's the story. That's the game. But that's okay. This is a roller coaster. And it ain't about the story. It's about how thrilling the ride is. Still, I think most would agree this is the weakest part of Gears 1. Colonel Hoffman lays out the main objective to use the light mass bomb to destroy the locust tunnels. And some stuff happens and then you do. Mission accomplished. Yeah. Most of the side characters are forgettable one-dimensional caricatures, but the main cast is decent. Yeah. Cease fire! <laughs> Dipshit. Phoenix is great. You can tell he has an I'm sick of this shit kind of attitude. Yeah. But he's too tough to outright complain about anything. So he just keeps marching forward. Are you the Marcus Phoenix? The one who fought at Asheville? Phoenix? Oh, yeah. This guy. This guy was like the Kenny of, uh, of Gears of War. He would always die. But then the next game, he would just be right back. But they could get away with it because he, he had like a helmet. I forgot this dude's name. <laughs> this was the funniest shit, dude. Shit. And he clearly holds some resentment over his imprisonment, but he puts his feelings aside for the sake of humanity. John DiMaggio does a fantastic job of making Phoenix a fucking Chad. Oh yeah, it never really, when I was a little kid, it never really, I never put two and two together and thought that Bender, like the guy that played Bender's voice, also played Marcus Phoenix. It's like, you think about it and it's like, yeah, they're kind of similar. <laughs> think they know what we're doing? Well, we're not here to sell cookies. Dom is just your best buddy. I don't often complain about voice actors, but the VO for Dom feels like a relic of that era of video games when they didn't really know how to do good voice acting. He does get better in the sequels, though. Cole is comic <laughs> relief meant to reflect the player's attitude as he treats fighting the locusts like it's a game which um, technically it is. Yeah. And Baird is a critical asshole who thinks he's smarter than the rest of Delta Squad. The chemistry and banter is fun for the most part, but it lacks a certain depth. Sometimes the dialogue feels like how you and your homies would talk shit to each other over Xbox Live. Uh -huh. So that's pretty accurate. Plan? What plan? You don't have a plan. You're just talking shit. <laughs> plan. Just wait and see, asshole. So what you yeah, and since these guys were friends whenever they're calling each other assholes This is just what I thought when I was a little kid this I this is what I thought how people just talk to each other when they're friends They just call them like assholes and dumbasses and dipshits <laughs> This was like n normal Hang out with stranded. I don't hang out dickwad. I'm looking for dickwad <laughs> Somebody shut up there keep moving what? what I say 
but often the dialogue is so basic and plot focused it becomes predictable. Control. This is Delta Squad. Control. This is Delta. 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 Damn. Control. <laughs> <laughs> Control, this is Delta. Control, this is Delta. Control, this is Delta. Control, this is Delta. Control, this Damn. is Delta. Control, this is Delta. Control, this is Delta. Control, this is Private Phoenix. What? That's like the formula, you know? Delta Squad shows up to a bridge, yeah. and they're like, Control, this is Delta. We've arrived at a bridge. Should we cross it? Yeah, yeah. Affirmative. <laughs> Commencing bridge crossing operation. Great, let me know when you can. Control, this is Delta. Bridge crossing operation in progress. For the love of God, Phoenix, you don't have to fill me in on every minute detail. Control, this is Delta. Bridge crossing operation complete. Request new orders. Fuck you. Delta, this is Control. What? I feel like dialogue, even <laughs> exposition, is always better when it reveals something about a character. Five years ago. I lost 30,000 men in the blink of an eye. And the world just fucking watched. But so often the cast just talk about what they're doing or what they need to do, how to do it, and it gets kind of boring. Is that yeah. the resonator? Nah. Now what? Let's get that resonator. Bro, is that the rock? It looks like the rock. <laughs> um, the, yeah, the, for the most part, the story was like, kind of boring like the game loop was fun but the story loop was i mean it's exactly what he said it it's fun for like your first game session of like five or six hours and then after that it's like okay can we keep going later and the oscar goes to now we have to talk about the brumac in the room gears of war story is confusing because it works and it also doesn't. Yeah. Let me explain. I think every entry in a franchise should be able to stand on its own and as part of a series. If you take out the Gears of War sequels, the first game's story kind of sucks Locust dick. Reason being, Gears 1 does little more than plant important seeds that only sprout and grow in the sequels. So if you played the first one as a casual, it's mm -hmm. real easy to feel like, wow, I didn't learn much about this universe and I don't really care about any of it, but the game was super fun. And I suppose that's what they were going for. Now, you guys know me. Uh -huh. I'm not usually critical about storytelling in video games, <laughs> but here's the thing. Gears <laughs> one is kind of- Wait, how many videos did he do? They were going for. Now, you guys know me. I'm not usually critical about storytelling in video games. <laughs> Dang. Halo 5 campaign, Halo 5 campaign, Halo 5 can Whoa, I did not see these. Oh, there's parts, so a six part series. 14, 21, 24, 22, 22, 22. Like a little bit over an hour, hour and a half of why Halo 5 is bad campaign. <laughs> but here's the thing, Gears 1 is kind of like Doom. They are the exceptions to the rule. Yeah. Sure, they could have fleshed out the narrative more, but doing so might have taken focus away from the high octane gameplay. In other words, the core appeal. But mm -hmm. then again, there's also times where control is wrestled away from you so characters can spout exposition over a radio and you're forced to walk at a snail's pace. I hate it when games do this. Sometimes it happens when control. there's still enemies around. Yes, I'd love to restart the checkpoint. Thank you. I can respect the team at Epic for making Gears more of an action movie and not ham fisting an allegory about the war in Iraq down my throat which is what Gears 1 was intended to be. The game is <laughs> sparse on the details, maybe suspiciously sparse. Like how long have the locusts been on Sarah? Why did they declare war all of a sudden? How did human civilization survive this long without being aware of yeah. the massive alien threat deep underground? Yeah. Like how did that happen? Because if, if I recall correctly, the locusts didn't come from spaceships. It was all like they're underground. Like with that whole uh, hollow earth theory or whatever. They're just like, yeah, we're sick and tired of living underground. We're just going to come up. <laughs> you hear that? That's the sound of you dead on the battlefield for asking perfectly logical questions. If you really pay attention, though, you might start asking yourself, 
Is this really a fight for humanity's survival? A valiant effort to secure our future? Are we just cogs in the war machine trying to colonize hostile planets? You can ask questions and ponder the mysterious reasoning behind everything, but the game is equally enjoyable if you turn your brain off completely. And maybe that's why the first game is so light on context, because the cog wants to hide the horrible things they've done yeah. from you, the player. They don't want us to know this might really be a war for emulsion, for resources, and not a war for survival. A lot of the backstory and world building is in the back, tucked away. At one point, you encounter a small group known as the Stranded in Act 2. They don't take kindly to Delta Squad, and it's implied that's because Cog used the Hammer of Dawn to strike and destroy their own cities, killing millions and leaving many others stranded. If we stay here, they'll kill us for sure. Relax, will you? You relax. You gears all suck. Bunch of bloodthirsty fascist pigs. But a lot of these moments are so subtle, it's easy for them to fly over your head. I mean, not too much really happens in Gears 1. A couple characters are killed off, there's a main villain or two, it introduces the Locust in this universe, but the story is mostly driven by its plot, not so much the characters. I think the biggest complaint I have is that the story never feels like what we saw in the Mad World trailer. I never got that same sense of hopelessness and desperation. Yeah. In the end, making a fun video game is more important than making a compelling story. So It just depends on what you want like as a developer like what are you trying to do what are your intentions with the game if you want to make just like some fun action then you could do that or if you want to go to the other side and be like i want to make a philosophical uh, questioning uh, video games like you know with bioshock and whatnot like you don't have to have like the best of everything you can just focus in on one thing and just do that one thing really well like gears of war did Gears of War still succeeded. It made people interested in the future of this series and it planted the right seeds. Gears of War as a franchise seems like it's fallen on hard times recently. So it's jarring to look back on these old documentaries and see how much faith Microsoft put in the project. Microsoft, in the end of the day, they're a publisher who understands that it's about making a fun game. They understand the tension. Their job is to push and our job is to pull, but we both respect that. Gears of War established a solid fan base exclusively on Xbox sold over 1 million copies within two weeks. Dang. Epic Games brought third-person cover shooters to the mainstream. The Lancer and logo became iconic and synonymous with gamer culture, seeming- Oh yeah, I had that logo on a shirt. I wonder if I still have it, probably not. I'm probably too small or too big for it or whatever, but yeah, this used to be like a gym shirt that you could just throw this shirt on and just go to the gym with overnight gears of war had such a profound impact on the game industry and it was a massive w for everyone involved microsoft gained a new killer app for the 360 at the perfect time epic games showed off the power of the 360's hardware and unreal engine 3 demonstrating to other developers that unreal was capable of powering top tier triple a titles gears of war didn't just sell millions of copies it sold the engine behind it and set a new standard for graphics and cinematics in the end, Gears of War wasn't just another cog in the Microsoft money-making machine. It was an opportunity for everyone to prove themselves, and they did. They fucking nailed it. And while the story left a lot to be desired, this is as good of a starting point you could possibly have with a new IP. And that is why Gears of War was so awesome. Nice. So thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out Display and order some amazing metal posters. Link in the description and pinned comment. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to The Act Man for more buff content. All right, everyone, that's all I got for today. This is The Act Man signing out. Peace. Dang, dude, that's a good ass video. I might, can you get Gears of War on Steam? Let me see. Oh shit, wait. Wait, what? Wait, what? Uh, probably not. Gears 5. Why is it called Gears 5? Gears Tactics? <laughs> okay, maybe not. Whatever. But yeah, dude, this is a fucking awesome video. 
Um, yeah, I've had I sunk many hours into Gears of War. Um, I think a lot of the time, my it was me and my buddy uh, Mike playing it, and this was back when I worked at CC's Pizza. We would like nerd out over Call of Duty, and when we got bored with Call of Duty, we'd go play Gears of War, and it, it was just so fun, man. Uh, yeah, but that's pretty much it for me. I'll catch you guys on the next one, all right? Later. <laughs>